This is the most important video you'll ever watch if you want to go to heaven and not hell. It's my favorite video to make because I'm loaded down with scripture and I'm going to try to make it as fast as possible. I love doing real long videos and detailed ones, but I have a church uh, sermon channel for that, Paul Kidd's Church Sermons. This is more of a watchman, so I'm going to try to make it as short as possible, but as thorough as possible. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's the problem. People think, Christians will tell you all the time that the Ten Commandments don't matter anymore. That they're something that used to be in the Old Testament, and when Jesus came and died on the cross, Ten Commandments were no good anymore. They were meaningless. First of all, God wrote the entire Holy Bible, Genesis to Revelation, everything in between. It's all vital, it's all important. There are a couple of things that are obvious uh, changes. Number one, people will, will try to point to the fact where in the Old Testament it said you couldn't eat certain things like shellfish and certain animals, but when God rolled the big sheet uh, in the New Testament down in front of Peter with all of, of these strange animals that no one would eat in the past, and God said everything that I made is good to eat, that superseded that. The same way with where they had they used to do animal sacrifices all the time to take their sins away. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, that took away the need for animal sacrifice. But the majority of the Bible, all the Bible is real, all of it is vital, but but obviously some things have been superseded, but they're still no less important. So let's go to the Ten Commandments, shall we? Let's blow it out of the water. So the people will tell you that you don't have to follow the Ten Commandments anymore, really. Let's see what Matthew says about that. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 23, the King James Version Bible. Nope, excuse me. I'm going to backtrack. That's another one. I'm going to go down to, I change my things to make them fit on the screen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. As always, all scripture I do is only the King James Version Bible. It's the only real Bible out there. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Revelation 21, 8. But the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, and sorcerers, and adulterers, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So let's go back to the Ten Commandments, shall we? It says, no liars, no murderers, no one who worships idols, no one who is an adulterer will go to heaven. Now let's see, the Ten Commandments says, thou shalt have no false idols before me. Okay, that's what the New Testament says, you'll go to, you'll go to hell. It says, to thou shalt not kill. The New Testament says, no murderer shall enter heaven, you go to hell. Thou shalt not commit adultery, it says it there. Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor, which means lying, and all liars go to the pits of hell. So that's been totally shot down. It just makes me so sad to see how people lie about the Ten Commandments not being real. God made the Ten Commandments for all men to obey when Moses was on the mountain, and they're still applicable today. It proves it in the New Testament. And we're, there's a, there are a lot of sorcerers all over the internet who divine things, diviners, sorcerers who uh, read symbols on anything from money to pictures to magazines to comic books to cartoons. What's to say about sorcerers? It says they'll burn in hell. Okay, so that takes care of the Ten Commandments. It shoots that out of the water. Now let's go ahead, we'll delete that one, and let's go ahead and go to Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 to 23. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there will be that find it. Now ask yourself a question. First of all, the word few in the Bible, if you look it up, it means a select minuscule group. So is it possible for the unsaved to enter the gates of heaven? No. So, who is Jesus talking to? He's talking to the saved. He's talking to those who think they're saved. The majority of whom are backslidden. And I'll get more into that in, in, uh, later on in the video. So, it says that few are going to enter there. Few Christians are going to enter that straight gate. Beware of false, false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. I did a video on that yesterday. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, 
but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wondrous works, wonderful works? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So the false prophets are all these liars out there that have huge YouTube and Facebook ministries that have churches, small churches, mega churches, anything in between, and they lie to you, but they'll be known by their fruit. Okay, you can look at them and see what they preach. You can look at my channel, you can go to my to my main Facebook page or any of the other six pages that I have, and look back from two and a half years back, you'll always see the uncut, pure, holy Bible preached. Go back 14 months on, on my uh, YouTube channel or, or two months on my home church sermon channel, the same way. We're known by our fruits. I preach the pure, true, holy word of God, the King James Version Bible. Anything that I teach, you'll see backed up. If you've messaged me, which thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of you have, you know when you ask me a question, what's your opinion, Brother Paul? What do I always tell you? I don't have an opinion. I'll tell you what the Bible says. Okay, My fruit is ripe. My fruit is good. And it's not because of anything. It's because I follow the Bible. If you follow the Holy Bible, if every word that comes out of your mouth is backed up by the Bible, you can never, ever, ever go wrong, my friends. All these people who teach you lies on their ministries, and I've seen them. They'll, they'll complain and they'll say, well, you know, the, the, uh, the, the IRS has put a, a lien on churches where they can't preach the gospel anymore, so they're hamstrung. Baloney. Baloney. The Holy Bible, the gospel of Jesus Christ, takes priority over any IRS junk. The pastors are gutless. Pastors will tell you, well, I always tell you, uh, I always tell you what I believe in, in, uh, in, in what I believe and what you believe are different, and I respect what you believe, and you respect what I believe. Baloney. We teach as pastors and teachers and watchmen the Holy Bible, cover to cover, verse, chapter, book, the entire thing, Genesis to Revelation. I expect everyone to believe every word that comes out of my mouth. You know why? Because every word out of my mouth is from the Holy Bible. There is no your opinion or my opinion. There is no you have your own way, I have my own way. No. That's why the church is so poisoned right now. That's why the majority of people who call themselves Christians are backslidden, are going to miss the rapture. If they can't make it to the Great Tribulation, they're going to end up in hell. This is the truth from the Holy Bible, my friends. This is what I'm trying to tell you, what I'm trying to teach you, and I'm trying to help you with. But people don't want to preach the truth anymore. They want to believe lies. They want to teach lies. I'm sick of it. I'm so tired of it. And then you'll have Christians tell you this. Once saved, always saved is the biggest lie. It's a lie from the pits of hell. I've got scripture. I've got 250 scripture, all from the King James Version Bible and commentary, on a Word document that I'll send to you. Just ask me. I've messaged it to tons of people. This proves, without any doubt at all, at least 250 times, that when you sin, the Bible says you have to repent of that sin. The Bible has at least 250 verses that proves that, and I'll send them to you. I also have the proof that the rapture is pre-tribulation. So many liars out there tell you the rapture is not. I've got proof from the Bible on a Word document. Contact me. But let's go ahead and go over some more stuff of how of how Christians are trying to... Uh, to, to scam and lie and teach lies. First of all, they'll try to tell you that in Philippians 1, chapter 6, chapter 1, verse uh, 6 and 11, let's go ahead and read them. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. They stop there. But let's go on to verse number 10. That ye may approve things that are excellent that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Be without offense till the day of Christ. So what Paul is trying to say, see Paul is a cheerleader. Paul was always trying to, to pump the churches up. He's telling them, he's confident that the Lord's going to finish that work, but he has a caveat, but you have to be sincere and finish without offense till the day of Christ. In other words, you have to have a spotless garment. I'll cover that more in a minute Revelation. In other words, you have to repent or you won't go in the rapture. So that shoots number one of their favorite scripture out of the out of the, the, the out of the water. Number two, this is rather favorite. John, chapter ten, verse twenty-seven and twenty-eight. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So they're saying by this verse that, that Jesus is saying no one can pluck can pluck you out of his hand. 
you're right, but listen to this. You missed the other part. In the original Greek transcript, when you read verse 27, the my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. The they follow me is continuous tense. It means following me from beginning to end. Let's reread it now in the original Greek transcript. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me from the beginning of their walk with me until the very end, whether they die or go to the rapture first. Then I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So we're free to walk away from Jesus Christ if we don't follow him continually again. You're shot out of the water. I just get so tired of all the liars. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Christians. It's so easy to go to the Bible. And if you have questions, get a hold of me, because I will tell you exactly what the Holy Bible says. Man, I get thousands of messages, but I don't care. I've got time for everybody. I will answer every message unless someone's trying to stalk me or be a troll, which I have sometimes. So let's go over some more. This is another another verse that that um, is very important that shows you have to repent. Hebrews 10.26 For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for our sins. In other words, after you're saved, if you go on sinning and you don't repent of those sins, there's no more sacrifice left for your sins. What does that mean? Jesus was the final sacrifice. His blood will no longer cover your sins if you do not repent. This is plain as day, my friends. Now, another favorite that you're going to hear from Christians all the time. Don't judge me. Let's break this down. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 to 5. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that's in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. So this is what it's saying. It's not saying don't judge. It's saying that before you call another Christian out for sin, you better make sure that you don't have your life filled with sin. In other words, let me, let me give you an example. Let's say that I'm a porno addict, which I'm not. But if I was a porno addict, and I, call, I, I called you out and said, you better stop looking at porno right now, you heathen, or you're going to hell. Excuse me? I've got to beam in my own eye before I try to tell you what's in your eye. That's what it means by don't judge. And let's go ahead and go down and cover some more, shall we? Titus chapter 2, verse 15. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. This means that when someone is sinning, the Bible commands us to rebuke, correct, and teach with all authority of God behind us, and let no man tell you not to do this. And 2 Timothy 4.2 Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, extort with all long-suffering and doctrine. In other words, rebuke, correct, and teach all Christians that are in sin. Jesus is telling you to do that. This is not an option. So that shoots the whole don't judge me thing out of the water. I love this, man. This is great to be able to break this stuff down. Now let's get into some stuff that is at the very end of the Bible. Key stuff, my friends. All these liars that say, once you're saved, you're always saved. You never have to repent of your sins. Let's go to Revelation 3, my favorite chapter in the Bible. Understand, when Jesus is talking to the church in Sardis and Laodicea, these churches in the, Christian, in the old Bible days, if you were a member of a church, you had to be A, a Christian, and B, be water baptized. Or filled with the Holy Spirit. You, there wasn't any Christian like today, anybody can call themselves a Christian. 86% of the world say they're Christians. In the Bible days, you had to be one. So what does Jesus say to the churches? Let's start with, with um, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. And unto the church, unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write these things, saith he, that hath the seven spirits of God, <coughs> and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Jesus said, this church has a name for themselves, like most churches do. That they're alive, that they're vital, that they're, that they're leading people to Christ, that they're a great asset to God. Jesus says, you're dead. You're spiritually dead. You're backslidden. Verse 2. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent. You catch that? Repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour will come upon thee. So Jesus is saying, remember how you started off, Christian? Repent of those sins. Follow your knees and repent, and I will forgive you if you ask me to, sincerely. If not, 
I'll come on thee as a thief in the night. You don't know what hour I'll come. The rapture will happen like a thief in the night, and you'll be left behind, backslidden Christians. Please read what the Word of God says, and stop believing lies and, and, and liars. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Only a few Christians in that church don't have their garments defiled. They're repenting when they sin to keep their garments spotless. They'll walk in white with Christ. The rest will be left behind. Listen, Christians. This is my favorite out of the whole thing. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Or, he that does not overcome, the same shall not be clothed in white raiment, and I will blot out his name from the book of life, and I will not confess his name before the Father and the angels. Please, Christians, and those who want to be Christians, please read this. It's as plain as day. Now let's go to chapter, to verse 14, <coughs> with Laodicea. And unto the church of and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot, cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. You got that? Repent. Repent. Jesus is, re is rebuking. Why would he rebuke you if it, is, if it doesn't matter? If you've already been saved and your sins don't matter anymore, why would he rebuke you and tell you to repent again twice now in the last book of the Bible in chapter 3? And he's telling you that he'd rather you be cold or hot because you're lukewarm. You're a backslidden Christian. He will vomit you out of his mouth. That's what the word spew means. He will vomit you out of his mouth. Okay, let's go down to some more Revelation 21-27. And there shall in no wise enter into, into it, heaven, anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the name's book of life. Jesus already told you er, earlier, in verse 5, that he will blot your name out of the book of life, if you don't repent of your sins and finish with the spotless garment. So he's saying here, that no lies, no abomination, no sin will enter heaven. Only those whose names are in the book of life who repent of their sins, after they're saved. You guys got this? Is, is it pretty clear? And let's go to the very end of the, of the Bible. Revelation 22, 18, and 19. I love this. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. So many people who call themselves Christians who teach teachers, preachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles, they're liars. They poison the word of God. What did Jesus just say there? He said that I, if you add one word to this book, I will add all the plagues contained here. In other words, you're going to go to hell. You take away one word out of this book, I will take away your eternal life and send you to hell. Jesus is not playing, my friends. It's so easy. It's so easy to be a Christian. Being a Christian has nothing at all to do with religion. Religions have ruined Christianity. When Jesus Christ walked the earth, and when he died on the cross and rose again on the third day and went back to heaven, there was no religion. It was Christianity. You follow Jesus Christ. All the religions started building up over time. Now we've got all these phony religions. And I'll tell you something. I've been in Pentecostal churches. Most of those around are poison now. Church of God, most are poison. Wesleyan Church, almost all of those are poison, if not all of them. Of the of Church of the Nazarene, poison. Baptist, poison. Southern, free will, whatever you want to say, poison. Any church you can think of, Catholic, Mormon, it doesn't matter, New Age, uh, Hindu, Muslim, Islam, Islam, <coughs> Buddhist, poison. The only, religion has nothing at all to do with Christianity. Being a Christian has nothing to do with religion. What it has to do with is following Jesus Christ like I've shown here and reading this Bible that he's standing in front of with his hand pointing to it and living the way that Bible says every day. Waking up in the morning, picking up your cross, and following Jesus day and night, putting on the full armor of God so you can resist the devil and all of his fiery darts and temptations, and live the way that Bible says, cover to cover, every day and every night, and you'll go to heaven. You'll be raptured imminently when the rapture happens any second of any day. Because it's coming, my friends, very, very soon. Any second of any day. Only God knows the day and the hour, but it's soon. He's given us a sermon to know the season. So that's what it's all about. Forget religion. 
Forget all these people who are religious and all these liars that lie to you and tell you lies. Go by the Holy Bible. When someone has a video, they teach something, go to the Bible. And, and I don't care what they say later. They'll try to they'll try to rewind and reverse things. They'll try to, to hide things and give you scripture out of context. Once you've found in the Bible that they're liars, unsubscribe from their channel, unfriend from their from their Facebook, and run from them as fast as you can and never listen to a word they say again because they're they're accomplished liars. They're accomplished con artists and cult leaders. All they care about is two things. They care about money and ego. They want your money. They beg for your money all the time. They got a huge ego and they want to act like they're some kind of a big god, some kind of a pharaoh of the internet. Like the great like the great pharaoh of the internet, Cluck and Nutton. I'm telling you right now, you have to run away from the liars. Run away from them as fast as you can. Only go by this Holy Bible. And again, my friends, please message me. I'll send you right to the Bible. I'll send you exactly to where the scripture is. You read it for yourself. Don't even listen to me. Read it for yourself. And you'll see the truth. i got to stand before this Jesus Christ. You've seen this picture, this God-man, the perfect man, the Son of God, one day an answer for my ministries. I've got eight or nine of them running right now. depends on what time it is. I got to answer for everything that I tell all of you and everything I don't tell you. And I take it very seriously. I am never going to lie to you. My job is to point people to the cross of Christ where they can be saved and pray. Every video to have a salvation prayer, give you next steps. And I don't see anyone else doing that. It's not because I'm anything. I'm nothing. I just follow what Jesus Christ wants us all to do. We're Christians, Christians, Christians. We follow Jesus Christ and emulate him. But sadly, few do. It's going to be a terrible wake-up call. Seconds after the rapture. I've got a video on the rapture, too. Please watch it. Of those left behind. It's going to be horrendous. Very few are going to make that rapture. Most so-called Christians will be left behind. And it's going to be terrible because they're going to try to convince the world, hey, the rapture couldn't have happened because I'm still here. They just took all the Bible-thumping, Jesus-freak, holy waters like Paul Kidd and his ilk and got rid of them. Praise the Lord. They're gone. They're evil. Don't believe the hype. It's a sequel. They're trying to get you. Remember, the Holy Bible tells a story. The rapture is going to happen soon, and those who don't make the rapture are going to be left behind for seven years of hell on earth that will make today's terrible world look like forever on the beach. 100-pound hailstones falling out of the sky. The sun's so hot it gives you third-degree burns. A 100-million-man army coming through and slaughtering a third of all human beings on the face of the earth. <coughs> a huge asteroid coming down. It's not going to miss like all these. A huge one's going to come down. Destroy a third of mankind again. Destroy the oceans, streams, rivers, lakes, animals, trees, flowers. There's going to be stinging demon insects out of the pits of hell that will sting you for months and months at a time with no relief. You're going to be starving. You're going to be homeless. You're going to be... You're going to be... You're going to have to have your head chopped off and be a strong Christian and survive everything else just to be able to, to make it to heaven after that. Why go... Th and so much more. Why go through all that when you can, you can come to Jesus Christ right now as Lord and Savior? As I always do in the 800 and something videos I've got here, my other channel and on Facebook, I'm going to give an altar call right now. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior... You pray this prayer, and I'll give you next steps and let you go. I know you've been, you're very busy, and thanks for taking the time to watch this. This is real meat and potatoes, my friends. It's surf and turf with a side of a key lime pie. It's the best food you can get in your life. It feeds your spirit and your soul. And if you're a backslider, pray this prayer as well and come back to Jesus. Let's pray. Jesus, I love you. I know that I've sinned. I've done terrible things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day, went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of God, to make a place for your children forever. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. When you pray this prayer, Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. And when you get saved, get you a King James Version Bible I've been talking about. It's the living, breathing Word of God. The way you feed your body with food and water every day, this Bible will feed your spirit and soul if you read it daily. Ten bucks. You can buy it on Amazon, eBay, places like that. Number two, pray daily to Jesus. He loves you. wants to hear from you every day. Number three, <coughs> get water baptized in a Christian church, dunked under water as soon as possible. If you were sprinkled baptized in the past, it don't count. Do it over again. Number four, pray to be sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit from head to toe, by living for Christ, by reading the Bible, by praying every day. Number five, take that King James Version Bible to church when the pastor preaches. And if you can't find a good Christian church, start a home church. Talk to your friends, neighbors, co-workers, loved ones. When that pastor preaches, if you don't match that Bible, you close it and walk out and find somewhere else to worship. Because anyone who lied to you in Jesus' name, anyone who lied to you about what God's own word says will drag you to hell right along with them. And lastly, repent, repent, repent. When you sin after you're saved, you have to repent. The Bible says it hundreds of times. Message me. I've got the scripture for you. 
you'd like me to pray for anything, from a terminal illness to a sick pet, anything in between, contact me. I have the gift of faith, mustard seed faith. I didn't earn it or deserve it, but when I prayed for it, he gave it to me. Praise the Lord. And I will pray for you if you ask me to every day, no matter what it is, for a miracle in your life. And I've seen thousands and thousands and thousands that have been online that I've prayed for people and God's performed miracles. It's not because I'm anything. God does all the work. All I am is his servant, his bond servant, his slave, like the original Greek transcript says. Paul was a slave to Christ, Apostle Paul. Not a servant, but a slave. That's what I am. And I'll pray for you without fail every day. If you have any questions, contact me. I have open messaging on YouTube and Facebook, and my main Facebook channel is linked up in the top of my channel where the comments, remarks for my channel is all about. I love you guys. This is why I do this, and I pray for you every day. Please, please, please come to Jesus now. Stop looking at religion. Start looking at Jesus Christ and the Holy Bible. Good night.